Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. I hope you're doing well, staying safe, taking care of yourselves, all those kind of things. And I hope you have fun editing your photos in Illuminar AI. And that's what I'm doing today. And today we're talking about dodge and burn, but not with the dodge and burn tool. So let me talk about this for a second. Here's a photo. I have cropped it and I have taken out some spots. Um, and dodge and burn is down here. Now I did a video a while back about dodge and burn. May have been a deep dive, I don't recall, but basically it allows you to selectively um, apply a brightening adjustment um, with a brush or selectively a, apply a darkening adjustment also with the brush. Um, and that's the lighten or darken, uh, dodge and burn. Lightning is dodging and burning is darkening. So you come in here and you know you adjust your strength. Let's say I'm gonna go 15 and brush of this size and I'm on lighten, and let's say I want to lighten this water, I just want to make it a little bit brighter, kind of make it stand out, and I want to get the water down here, blah, 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 same kind of thing. So I would come in here and do exactly what I'm doing, which is what I've just done. And then I would come in with darken and say, well, yeah, but I also want to kind of darken some of these edges around the water because it adds a little bit of drama, and I like my drama. You know, I like dramatic photos, and I kind of want to draw the viewer's attention. So I'm going to darken some of this stuff, and then I'm going to make my mouse really big and darken some of this rock because, hey, I don't want you to be distracted by all the texture in the rock. I just want you to look at the water because it's a cool waterfall and, you know, blah, blah, blah. So if I show you, actually, I'll just do that here with the dodge and burn tool. Um, if I turn this off, there we go. That's what the photo looked like before dodge and burn. And then when I turn it back on, there you go. That's what it looks like after dodge and burn. So it's a great and powerful and easy and quick way to selectively or, you know, uh, not selectively. Well, yeah, selectively. Selectively apply a lightening or darkening with the brush. In other words, you're masking in a brightening or a darkening adjustment locally. Well, here's the thing. The, what I usually find I want or need to do to a photo is after I've do done dodge and burn or maybe before, I've separately masked in some other things in those areas that I might want to do to the photo. So you can actually replicate dodge and burn and some other stuff at the same time with the local mask. So you come over here to local masking, add a basic local mask, and you can do the same thing as dodge and burn, which is brighten or darken. There's some benefits here of doing it this way though, and that is you can see what uh, your photo is gonna look like as you adjust these sliders. So as you can see, I'm dragging the exposure to the right, which is brightening the entire photo because I haven't masked it in. That's the way local masking works in Luminar. You'll drag it and any uh, slider adjustments you make here will adjust the entire photo. In other words, they'll be global until you mask them in. So let's say we wanna do a brightening or a dodge. Um, what you do is you come in here and you just kind of adjust the photo the way you want it. Maybe you wanna add a little contrast and you know maybe you wanna take the structure down because I like to do that in the water. And now I just get my brush and I just go paint this in to the water where I want it to go. So I'm gonna kinda of and I'm going kind of sloppy, or I'm going kind of quick, which by definition means I'm kind of sloppy here, but you will be able to see that I have masked in this adjustment to the areas of the photo where I want it to apply. So let's pretend I did a good job there, and you can see, I mean, immediately if I turn this off, there it is before, and there it is after, so it's quite obvious I have done a dodging adjustment but remember, I did some other things too. I also increased contrast. I took down structure and I can also cool it off. Let's say I wanna take the warmth to the left to cool it off because, hey, this is a canyon and it's late afternoon. There's a little bit of light coming through as you can see, but you know, to me, water like that kinda of feels like it needs to be a little bluer for some reason. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and that's the power of doing dodge and burn with the local mask instead of with the dodge and burn tool because you probably wanna do some of these things to that water anyway, so why not mask it in one time using local masking and then adjust the exposure, which is the dodge and burn adjustment, but also maybe adjust contrast or shadows and highlights or whatever, saturation, vibrance, uh, structure. In this case, I could go more negative, and so that's the other thing is I can come in here now, I've got my mask in place, I could just mess around until I get it exactly the way I want it. So I can come back here and just play with that mask as much as I need to. I'm gonna add another one, and this one will be my burning adjustment. So once again, I'm gonna go to the, uh, the left this time, 
and I'm just looking at the areas that I want to be dark, and that's about how dark I want them to be. So I'm gonna come in here, and I'm just gonna paint this in. Now keep in mind, as you paint, you've also got an opacity slider, so you can adjust that if you need to. But I'm just gonna paint in some darkening or burning in these areas here where I kinda want it to be a little more dark. Uh, so I'm gonna shrink my mouse, and I'm gonna get a little bit of this water here because I think that looks good. I'm kind of framing this whiter water with a little bit darker water. Um, you know, it's kind of natural like that, as you can see, but um, you can come in here and maybe add a couple of streaks of darkness uh, so that that brighter part sticks out a little bit more. Maybe shrink your mouse, whoa, not that far. Shrink your mouse a little bit, do a little bit more, something about like that. Uh, and then once again, I can cool it off, but I don't, um, you know, maybe not cooling it off to the same extent that I cooled it off on the dodging adjustment. So I, or I could go more if I wanted to, right? I don't want to go too much, but I could do something like that. I could pull the shadows down. It's going to help darken it a little bit more. I could increase structure if I wanted to because I've got rock. Now, I've also got water down here at the bottom, but a little bit of structure doesn't really look bad for me. That's kind of the framing, and I think that looks kind of cool. There is some natural texture in that water. Structure doesn't look bad there. I tend to soften water, but a situation like this where you already have some natural flow and structure in the water, I think it looks pretty cool. So you can come in and do that. And so this is my burning adjustment, but I've done more than burn. So there it is before, and there it is after. And in fact, I forgot to paint in a little bit of that here. I wanna darken that a little bit because I think that looks cool and maybe darken a little bit of that as well. And let me touch up the edge of this rock here. Now let me turn it off. There it is before, and there it is after. Maybe I went a little too heavy there. I could come back and erase a little bit. I could take the opacity down and maybe erase a little bit of that. So I've darkened it a little bit, but not quite as heavy handed. And maybe the same over there. And then same thing, if I wanna come back and paste a little, or paint a little bit, uh, you know, you can just kind of season to taste, but the opacity slider comes in really handy because you can just keep adjusting that brush and the opacity to customize the look of it. And so let me turn this off. There you go, there's before my burning adjustment overall, and there it is after. As you can see, I've selectively applied darkening adjustment with a brush. In other words, I've burned certain areas, like kind of framing it a couple of spots in the water and of course the bottom and the edges in order to really draw your eye in and I'm creating contrast. That's what dodge and burn does. Lightening and darkening, you're creating a difference in the light. That's what contrast is, the difference between the brighter and the darker spots. I keep doing my hands like this. I don't really know why, but you get the point. So that's how you can use dodge and burn with the local mask instead of the dodge and burn turn tool, excuse me, and frankly, it's easier. And I say easier, it's actually the same mechanism or same motion, you're selectively painting it in, but it's easier, or I should say, it's more efficient with your time, because if you have other adjustments you wanna do in those same areas, many of those would be right here in this basic local mask, which as you may recall, this local mask is very similar to what you get up here in the uh, primary tools on the light tools. So you get a lot of those capabilities here. And that's why local masking is such a powerful addition to Luminar AI. That's how you can use local mask to replicate and in fact exceed what you could do with a dodge and burn tool. And frankly, save yourself time because as I said, once you've created the mask, there are very likely other adjustments that you would do here in that same area. So you keep yourself from having to go do that with a different tool at another time. So if I turn this off, that's what my photo looked like before. And there it is after my dodge and burn, right? I've just created a little bit more dramatic photo, a little bit higher contrast. Let me turn on the before and after and a little bit more mood in the photo by adjusting or manipulating the light. You can kind of see like that shadow right up here. I think that looks a little bit better where it's deeper and darker shadow. And that's a little brighter here. Uh, and then down here in this center area as well, like right up in there, I just think it looks better. It's cooled off a little bit. Some of the yellow tint is gone and it's a little bit brighter, which I think looks nice. So that's an example of how you can replicate dodge and burn with the local masking tool and frankly, save yourself time, get more efficient in your workflow and do more things with one mask versus re repeating it again and again with the different tools. Hope it helps. Hope it gives you some ideas. Thanks for watching my friends. Take care of yourselves out there. Have fun editing, all that kind of stuff. I will see you in the next video, my friends. Take care. See you later and adios.